Hi, everybody. This is Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live number 100. Holy cow. Can't believe it. 100 live broadcasts. That's amazing. Well, I mean, I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed that I did it. So welcome. I'd like to in, uh, invite you to hang around today. And we're going to talk about uh, when we sing higher into our head voices, how come or what, you know, we have you ever had that happen where uh, you're singing from chest to head and then you get to the head voice and it sounds like somebody else singing? We're going to try and fix that today or at least talk about how to fix it. So um, welcome. And it uh, looks like there was uh, some waiting, people waiting in the wings here. Trippy said, hi, random people who are watching this stream. <laughs> Norin. Hey, Norin. Nice to have you here. Uh, so, you know, for a long time, and I have to say, I mean, for a long time, I, I could vocalize up there, right? Up in head voice. I could say, uh, but to sing up there was like a whole different deal, right? Maybe you've experienced that. Hey, Abby, nice to have you here today. And, uh, George. Nice to have you here. Thanks, you guys, for joining me today. Uh, we're going to be talking about something that this is this is a this is a point of frustration for a lot of people because they um, in the progression of how how we are learning, we find out that we can actually sing a little bit higher than we thought we could, and we you know all our lives we've kind of been hitting this spot where it always broke or it you know we always came into this straining or reaching kind of feeling. For me, I just would hit the, I thought it was the top and I would just stop singing and come to find out we can go into another room, which uh, for us guys is our head voice. For the ladies, it's um, up in through the, well, all of us is through our bridge where we can start to mix chest and head and we get up into our head voice and there's a whole another place to sing. So the problem is we sound like two different people doing that at first. Not a, not everybody, but a lot of times it just you know the sound is different, or we think it's different. Maybe we should talk about that a little bit too. Anyway, hi you guys, uh, Mike. Nice to have you here. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's just you know it's just kind of amazing. You just do it, show up every week, and pretty soon. And a hundred weeks, you've got a hundred of these. <laughs> uh, Nora, so I'll be showing you next week how much I have improved. Awesome. Uh, you, you have combat. Uh, many thanks for your work. Tell me about your online course. Tell more about your online course. Okay. I, I will. I'll tell you more about that. So uh, several of you here, I think, have actually had that course. Trippy, are you really here, or were you just is it just like a random um, thing that you wrote down and you've gone? Anyway, um, so we're this is our pre-show show. We'll start in about a minute and a half or so. We'll we'll get going on our uh, show show. Mike says that's my biggest. This is my biggest thing. I want to figure out. Yeah. Because we know it's there, we we can extra, do our exercises up there, but uh, there's a bit of slip between uh, cup and lip, <laughs> and when we're when we're actually trying to sustain notes up there, and well, singing is there is one thing, like on a melody up there, or or maybe a lick or something where you're just kind of hitting it and then you're off of it, but then it's like sustaining a note up there. Like that's, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> it's harder than, actually it's probably easier than it looks, but for us it's hard because we're just learning how to do it. And it's, you know, we'll talk more about why it's hard, but um, it's like this, it's like this oasis and we see it in the distance and we, we just keep walking towards it and it just stays, you know, gets further and further away or it never gets any closer and it starts to feel like a mirage right no there really is a destination there really is a place to arrive Norris says how do I make my sound more dopey for some of the exercises um, 
we'll talk about that. First of all, let me just welcome all of you who've joined us at the top of the hour. I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live, number 100, if you can believe it. Today we're going to talk about chest to head voice. Uh, singing chest to head voice sounds like two voices. And let's and how to fix it. So we'll, we'll talk more about that today. I want to welcome you here. And um, I, want, I want this to be very a very good and effective a bit of time for us. So I will come back. I'll circle back and try and answer some of the other questions. Many of them are a little bit uh, somewhat related. And, um, but let's talk about this. So what I'm really talking about is if, if we're able to sing, um, <clears throat> But then we start getting into that bridge. Ah, 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 ah. So now we're singing down here. But when we have to sing up here, it's about like this. If any of you have ever, um, let me see, I forgot his name. Well, there's a, uh, huh, I should have written this down. Anyway, he, he's uh, done a lot of Broadway show stuff. Um, and he'll be singing down along here. He'll be singing something in this kind of upper chest area. And he's very strong and very powerful. And then when he comes in, he's up here. When he's singing in head voice. And it sounds like someone else is singing. It's rather strange. You know, I mean, it's it's cool that he can hit hit the notes in some fashion, but um, it really does kind of sound like a second person singing. But he's on Broadway. However, uh, we don't necessarily have to have that happen to us. I mean, he does it well enough that it's it's fine, but he does sound like somebody else. Oh, I just remembered his name. I don't know if I would even dare say this because it's not. I've heard I've heard Mandy Patikin uh, sound like two people. I'm not saying he does that all the time, but there's a couple songs I've heard him sing where uh, it sounds like two guys. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sure he's not the only person, but that's the guy that comes to mind. All right, so hi, uh, let me say hello, uh, Abby, you, you clapped. Well, thank you, Abby. Um, okay. Hey, Dora Cake. Hi, nice to have you here. Is this your, are you new? I don't recognize your handle here. Nice to have you. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let, let me know, have you guys ever experienced that in your own voice? Yes or no? Yes, I have sounded like somebody else. <laughs> or no? No, I sound the same, whether I'm in head voice or chest. Just let me know. I hope I'm not the only one here that's had that happen to them. So I remember this experience where, uh, hey, Ian. Hi, nice to have you here. I remember this experience where I was in an audition, and they lined us guys up. There's like six of us or seven of us. or, And I don't even remember what show it was. And I, I can't remember if it was... If the show, I, th I think it was a callback. We were on stage, which doesn't always, we don't, in my area where we do theater, we're not always on stage for um, auditions or callbacks. We're in a rehearsal hall. But we were on stage in, their old, in our old theater. It was a small theater. And they lined us up and they said, uh, one by one, I want uh, each of you to sing from uh, the phrase, from in the music of the night which is uh, from Phantom of the Opera. And uh, they have to land on the A. I think it's on the A. And it's something like, um, it's something like this. It says, uh, let your soul, what? I can't remember the key, but the last note is, so the phrase is, let your soul take you where you long to be. So it's on an A, or maybe it's an A flat. B, 
let's just pretend like it's an A. And so I remember getting up there and doing it. Let your soul tell you. Uh, let me see, what is it? Let your soul take you where you want to. Want, want to. And I, I was hoping that I could do it, but it ended up being kind of like B. In, in this particular phrase, you got to do it like in, in the song. They wanted it. They didn't want it light and airy and, and quiet. They wanted the biggest, strongest sound you could make. Well, I did my best. I, again, I can't remember what the show was. I can't remember it was a, uh, it was a callback, I'm pretty sure. But I just remember thinking I didn't do it that well. I just, even though I could hit it, it sounded too light and airy and breathy. Um, so how, you know, so look, I've been there. I know what we're, you know, I've experienced that. And um, what is it that gets us, gets us to the point where it sounds like our voice? Hey, Riser Wood, uh, I want to ask straight. What do you think about different approaches about going to head voice early or stretching head voice high? Uh, I choose the second approach and I now feel progress I didn't have before. When I exercised early bridging for a year, it didn't work. Um, I'm not sure, Riser. I, um, I'm not sure why you would, let me see, think about different approaches to head voice, going to head voice early or stretching head voice high. Um, I don't quite understand because once you hit head voice, how do you stretch head voice high? If you're in head voice, what are you going to do when you're singing higher? Are you just sing head voice? And if you sing head voice higher than that, I mean, as you keep going up. So if I'm in head voice here, Am I stretching it high or am I just singing head voice? I think I'm just singing head voice. So I'm a little confused by the terms. Um, I don't feel like pulling chest voice up high. I think it's a, it's a, uh, it's a way to pull chest. You I mean people pull chest voice all the time higher and it's definitely stronger. It may not sound as good and it might be bad for your voice, but that happens a lot. Anyway, so, um, I get lots of people making comments here. So let me get into this here. So several have said, yes, they have had this happen. Strangeland says, hi, Strangeland. I don't recognize your hand either. Are you new today? It's great to have you here. Yes, I definitely feel like I have two voices. Um, uh, <clears throat> By the way, I mean, so, um, so I don't so Oh, okay, okay. So Riser is, is clarifying. It's chest. Yeah, you know, uh, when people are in a hurry, it's part of the. Here's part of the thing. I was going to make a quote here. This is from Singing from the Stars. It's by Seth Riggs, and uh, he's doing a question and answer in the back, and the question is. Uh, what's the key to singing well? And he explains it. Um, you maintain a speech level production of tone. One stays connected, uh, one that stays connected from one part of the range to the other. In other words, from chest to head and head back down the chest stays, the tone stays connected. You don't sing like you speak, but you, you need to keep the same comfortable, easy produced vocal posture that you have when you speak. So you don't reach up or you don't press down for low notes. And then the question is, is singing really that easy? And he says, yes, there's no great mystery involved. But although it's easy to understand, it takes time and patience to coordinate everything so that you can do it well. Well, what does that mean to coordinate it so you can do it well? It's like learning something new. And I, I go back to, you know, sports. If you're learning to play tennis, it takes a while to, to learn to swing the racket so that you can hit it uh, with a fore, forearm and then with a, a, back, a backhand 
um, and it takes it a while. It takes you a while to be able to serve in a, a in an excellent fashion. So even though you can get it across the net, which is a lot, what of us are a lot of us are doing, right? We're singing well enough to get across the net. But what we want to do is we want to smash it across the net. We want it to. We want to have 120 mile an hour balls going just you know to the other side. And at first we're we're, we're just happy that it makes it over the net, right? But that's not going to necessarily get us any into any tournaments, or we're not going to be winning any of those. That's really what we're talking about here. But in singing, as well as in tennis, it takes time and patience. And over a period of years, I think, if you're going to do it right, now uh, we can learn to smash the ball really hard and it might work sometimes, but it's probably not going to get you where you really want to go in the long run. Um, and in terms of singing, so Riser, I come back to your question here for pulling chest voice or stretching head voice, uh, chest voice high. It's a way to get immediate power. It's also a way to get immediate vocal damage. And, uh, and, and this is what, um, this is what happens to a lot of the pros out there who just, you know, they pull. They pull their chest voice high, and over a period of time, they have to have surgery. And if the surgery goes okay, then you've only missed maybe a year, year and a half, which, depending on who you are, may cost you 30 to 40 million. Um, or if it doesn't go well, then your, your career is cut short. But the really great singers learn how to do this, and they do it well over a period of time. And we've, I've shared this before. Pavarotti said it took him 10 years to get an F the way he wanted it. Just That's just an F above middle C. That's not high for him. But it took him, maybe he said, that sound, sound easy, maybe take 10 years. So uh, time and patience is what this is about. There's not really a secret way to learn to be a great golfer and have a great, fantastic golf swing. There's not really a secret shortcut that just gets us to be able to be like a pro-level tennis player. And the same thing is true with singing. It's really true. It just doesn't, uh, you know, there are shortcuts definitely that we can take, but they're shortcuts and eventually they end up not taking us where we want to go. All right, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my feeling at least. I know there's a, uh, and I can help you. I mean, I can help you get, um, we can do some shortcuts and, and we can get you up into your, uh, and you can do it without pulling chest. So, <clears throat> so if I said, um, well, let me see. First of all, let me just, why does this, why is this so, why does this happen? Why does it sound like we get two different voices? It's because we haven't quite got used to this new coordination. We, we, we're there. So I'm, I'm not in falsetto, but it's just lighter than I want. And I can't quite figure out how to lean on it to get it stronger. Well, it comes by just doing our exercises, the vocal exercises by practicing. It comes by, there's a couple principles. One, that the larynx is down. Two, the vocal cords are adducted appropriately. They're coming together appropriately. There's a nice balance between the air coming from the lungs and the vocal cords. So everything's balanced. We're not reaching. We're not squeezing. And um, over a period of time, by working in that coordination, getting used to it, then the vocal cords begin to take over. And they begin to do it on their own without extrinsic muscles gripping and grabbing and forcing it. Uh, Riser brought up you know, a question that's very, very common. And you can find this all over the internet. And you can see it all over Broadway and all <laughs> you can see it everywhere that people are in a hurry. And so they uh, start belting, pulling up, spreading vowels and all kinds of different things, which in a pinch will do. 
but it's not really great singing. Um, so it's foreign to us. It's awkward. It's something that we're not used to. And uh, we have to do things differently if we're going to really be, um, we're really going to be a good singer. So um, it takes time. It takes time to find it. It takes time to develop it. It takes time to strengthen it. Just like anything else. You want to get abs? Well, you can't go into a, a, a workout and come out with abs. There's a lot of things that go into it, including genetics. But, um, you, you know what I mean? So ab, abdominals, you want to have abdominals that show because you're you know, working out. Well, it takes dieting. The abs come from dieting. Um, and the definition and so forth comes from the workouts. And that takes months and months, maybe longer, depending. How much weight do you have to lose and so forth, all, that different, all those different things. And then the proper nutrition to maintain it. So uh, these things are all just law of the harvest. We've got to plant it. We've got to water it. We've got to cultivate it. And, and it's going to grow, and it will grow over time. And depending on, uh, you know, how well we manage that process, we either have, uh, have this tremendously powerful uh, tree that's grown, or we've got a little weed that uh, can get us through, uh, you know, a little tiny plant that can get us through the, a few years, but then it's going gonna, it's gonna to die out. We're not going to be able to sustain it because it's just not... It's, it's just not the kind of thing that's sustainable. Somebody asked me the other, somebody commented to me the other day, how many uh, old singers do you sing? Older. Older singers do you sing belting? Think about it. How many older singers do you see belting or pulling chest? It's just, it just, it's just not the kind of thing that your voice can do for a, a whole career, you know. Anyway, so in my opinion. So the, um, so what do we need to do then? Our exercises, the exercises that I teach are designed to get the larynx to stay where we speak, to get the, keep the larynx down at speech level. That is so the larynx doesn't rise up, so we don't squeeze or pinch it. Uh, it's a, to get the vocal cords to come together appropriately. It's to get the proper airflow uh, inter, interacting in a balanced way with the vocal cords. So we're getting the voice balanced, getting rid of tension, getting the release in the voice so that the vocal cords can function appropriately. Without the squeeze from the outside, if they're left, left to do their own thing, they can do it. They're m very adequate. They have all the power they need if we just get out of our way. <laughs> but we want it. We want it tomorrow. And so what do we do? Ha! We squeeze it. And uh, that'll get us through tomorrow, but it just is not long lasting. That's the problem. So. So it's very it's a very boring process here. It's things like same thing for the ladies. It's getting this in balance. It's getting the larynx down, larynx down. It's getting connected through the bridge. Or So that's the E flat. Um, you can't do those. You, you, you've got to be able to get all of that going so that there's uh, a balance. And so you can get through the bridge. And in this case, through the bridges. I just went through my second and third bridge. And, um, 
And once we get in this in the appropriate condition long enough, then it puts us in a, a situation where the, the voice can start to really function uh, with its real power, the potential that it has. And so eventually, as the B and the high C. Well, I don't sing any songs up there, but um, I do sing some high notes, and being able to sing the C sharp makes the G not feel so bad or feel so high. So by being able to do these things in practice, we start to be able to feel what it feels like or what it should feel like in, uh, in a song. So one day I was doing some exercises and I felt something uh, kind of like, ma, 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 ma. I thought, well, you know, that was pretty cool. Ma, 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 ma. And I, I just was, it was just like kind of zoned in all of a sudden. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I said to my teachers, "What?" Ha I said uh, to my teacher, "What happened?" I I know something happened. But I'm not sure what. He said, "You finally let go of the extra squeeze you had on the chords, vocal chords, and then the rest of the chord structure kicked in." And so I didn't understand what he was saying, uh, but I said, "Yeah, yeah. Well, I wish I knew how I did it." Well, uh, what he was talking about was if the vocal chords were doing this. Uh, maybe they were not quite going full depth of chord. Maybe they were like this, but when I finally got that release and let go of the squeezing, the vocal chords just automatically started kicking in, so I was getting this full depth, full depth of the vocal chords functioning, and all of a sudden it was just like I had some overtones that I didn't have before. And there was a fullness to it I didn't have before. I wasn't Oh, I, it just happened, you know. That's what can happen if, we, if we're patient with it. So I started realizing, well, there's a feeling there. Well, now if I could just duplicate that feeling on the A flat. And I had to think, how am I doing that? How am I doing that? And I, I divided it into two pieces. One was release. That is like release. Let, let, stop trying to make it powerful. Stop trying to make it powerful. And so for me, the first thing I had to do is like relax and just let up on it. And then once I did that, almost in the next moment, lean down into it. Now, I don't know how to describe what lean means, except in a way it's increased the, the, the loudness but not by gripping it, grabbing it, almost by, you know, give it more air, a higher velocity of air. The, the, one way I think of it is if I'm going to blow a whistle and I want to do it loud, I don't grip it, I don't grab it, I don't bite down on it. I just send more air through the whistle, right? And it makes it louder. That's kind of what I'm thinking. That's a, my comparison. So if I said, ma, 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 and once we get that, then what do we have to do? Well, we have to do it, we have to sustain it, we have to do it with vibrato, and we have to do it in a melody. Ma, 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 A flat. Ma, 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 G. So I'm going for the same feeling, let go, press into the feeling of letting go. F sharp, F. E. E flat, hardest note for a guy to sing. Ladies, same thing exactly for you, same principle. Oh, 
that's the C sharp. That's the top of your first bridge for most of you. Now, <clears throat> so once discovered that by uh, almost by accident and after just essentially years of practice um, where I finally let go of trying to make it powerful, <laughs> not let go. And I'm not talking about breaking into falsetto. I'm just talking about let go of the extra squeeze. Uh, let go of the extra whatever I was putting into it to try and make it big and powerful. So that's what led to, to I'm just talking about my process here, you guys, just what, you know, kind of my journey. And uh, in finding that, it came about by doing the exercises just on a routine day and trying to be aware that I had to let go of squeezing. I had to stop, stop trying to make it big and powerful and, try, and just relax and let the vo vocal cords do it themselves. And, and so everything's balanced, it had everything in balance, the larynx down, the cords together, the muscle and the air are, are balanced, playing nicely together, nice production. And then uh, it kicked in. The vocal cords were able to do their thing. They weren't being squeezed by the outside muscles. So if I said something like, um, So when I did that audition, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do what I've been showing you here. And I'm not, right now, I'm not really in, warmed up and I'm not in great vocal shape. But if I said, anyway, where you want to be, so that's the phrase, I think I would have, been one of the top auditioners if I've been able to do that. And I wasn't at the time. So it would have been about, I don't know, 15 years ago, 12 years ago. But I was already into it mm, five or six, seven years. So, um, and I've only been able to really do what I'm showing you here, I think more consistently in the last um, seven years. Seven years ago is about when I started kind of dialing into this. So it's a process. And, um, you know, I think about these, these professional swimmers or, you know, the high school kids who are up every morning at five in the morning doing laps. <laughs> and you think, wow, you know, what's the motivation there? You know, they're hoping to get another second, maybe two maybe three seconds faster, you know, something like that. Their, their progress incrementally doesn't seem like very much, but they are there every single day working on, you know, a more relaxed stroke, a better breathing pattern. I mean, all the little things that come together and uh, you feel like you're not making any progress. You feel like you're on a plateau and then suddenly one day you have a breakthrough. And then you go along and you're doing the things regularly like you did before, but it just feels like you're not, you know, you're just in another plateau and then all of a sudden another little breakthrough. And then you do the same thing again and you just day after day after day, you're working on it, you're working on those, uh, you're doing everything as precisely exact as you can, you're being patient, you're, you're, uh, you're being careful, you're getting everything just right and you go a couple of months or two or six or a year or something, and then you get another breakthrough. That's kind of the process from what I've seen. Okay, I'm through talking. Aren't you glad? <laughs> but um, it works. It works if you're patient. If you're in a hurry, uh, I haven't ever met anybody that could do it in a hurry. So let me back up here, and if anybody's still hanging around, let me see if I can address some of your questions. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so Mike uh, Bidwell, I hope, I hope that was a little bit informative. Um, 
It's not like a magic something. You know, there's no magic in it. Um, so somebody wanted to know about my course. I have a course that's called Sing Higher Than Ever Before. Several of you have taken it. Um, and I don't, it's not just on the website. It's not really offered to anybody um, until they, if you go to powertosing.com and just put your email and stuff in there and say, let's get started. I, I'll send you some welcome emails and some welcome videos and things. And then uh, within a couple weeks, I think, two or three weeks, then I'll start giving you information about uh, Sing Higher Than Ever Before, and then you can, you can purchase it that way. It's, pretty, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, also, I have a membership site. Mike uh, Biddy4 is uh, a member. Norin, I think you're in, right? Uh, George is in there. So several of you are members of Singers Impact, our membership site. It's a closed site right now. It's not available to join, but I'll be letting people know about it when we're, when we're ready to open it again. So we've got some founders who have joined early and they're suffering through some of the growth pains of website design and things like that. Thank you. Um, but um, it promises to be a really great learning opportunity for all the members. And I think we're getting some results. I think, Mike, you would say that we were so that'll we'll reopen that in a while, some in, in you know in a, f a few months, perhaps. Okay, so um, a, a question here was: um, This is my. How do I make my sound uh, my sound more dopey for some of the exercises? Norn, put your here put your hand here on your Adam's apple and say, duh. It's got to be a real stupid duh when you do that, and it can't be just. Duh, it doesn't go anywhere. Duh, but if I say duh, it really drops. And so rather than saying duh, I say duh. And, uh, and then instead of saying duh, I say gee. Or you can do that with about any of the exercises. Don't do it with bratty nay. Bratty nay is a, higher, is a higher larynx exercise. So that kind of like a fight against each other. But all the other exercises, you can do them kind of dopey. Um, and especially on the ones that I, that I'm, I'm giving you the example for. If I say do a kind of dopey gee or dopey goo, goo 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 goo, and as you go higher, um, and uh, ladies, same thing for you. As you go higher, if you find yourself saying goo 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 goo, this the larynx coming up. It has to go a little bit hollow sounding or hooty goo 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 if i say goo 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 larynx coming up goo 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 so there's a hollowness or hootiness to it if the larynx is staying down and i'm keeping that dopey sound then it's going to go hollow hooty sounding goo 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 um, so riser, uh, I don't know, you know, that's kind of, those are kind of the, the opinions I have about it. I don't feel like the law in the long run, it's beneficial, uh, to pull the chest voice higher. I think it's, uh, it's better to, uh, learn, learn that bridge, bridging process, make the transition to head and then build the head voice. It does take longer to do. A lot of people just pull, and uh, and a lot of people can get away with it for a while, but you know um, there are so many who haven't, and some of the professionals, um, you know, Keith Urban had surgery, Lionel Richie had surgery, Steven Tyler had surgery on his voice, um, and they were they all had polyps, you know, or, or um, nodules, um, a couple of couple of the pros have had hemorrhages. Sam Smith, I think, had a hemorrhage. Um, Adele hemorrhaged twice now. Um, so it's just that they just get into trouble and they can't maintain the, uh, the rigors of tour when pulling night after night after night. Michael, Michael Jackson, uh, Seth Riggs was his coach and he had a couple, I know of one instance where he, he 
um, kind of disregarded what Seth told him. And the next morning he was hoarse and he called Seth on the phone and, and Seth went over and they started working on through all the songs to, to get the vowels correct so that they weren't pulling the chest voice higher. So, um, and it worked, um, it kept Michael out of trouble. Uh, with his voice and being and never missing a, a, a night for the tour unless he unless he was sick uh, Marnik said yeah, she's uh, had two different voices uh, Dora cake has uh, a great taste and handsome older men <laughs> All right, I always feel like singers breathe differently than normal people Yeah, because you know if we're we don't one of the differences between speaking and singing is that we have to hold out the word and change pitch when we sing. So it is a little bit different. Um, and I have two videos on my website uh, about breathing. So I just go to homepage, powertosing.com, go to the search symbol on the right and type in breathing and you'll get there's several diff really good videos about how to breathe that's really efficient for singers ian says hey chuck i think you mentioned something like middle zone when when we bridge from chest to head could you please demonstrate what what it is how many notes in it how does it sound thank you yeah so um we have chest we have head and there's middle some people refer to it as an actual like register in the voice i i don't know that that's completely accurate but it's simple to say. So we say chest, middle, head. Another word for middle is bridge. Chest, bridge, head. Because bridge is in the middle or in between chest and head. And so it's really, uh, Ian, basically this middle is the bridge. For us guys, it's um, <clears throat> typical if you're a bass, uh, a regular bass or a um, baritone and tenor, Primarily baritones and tenors are E, F, F sharp and, a, and quite a few basses. And that's that middle area. But interestingly enough, Ian, just a couple notes before, uh, that's uh, riser, that's where I, I recommend it's, it's okay to bridge early. So you can start, so now that the, those three notes have kind of expanded a little bit because I'm saying there are times when you want to start bridging early, getting into the middle sooner uh, because it's going to make it easier for you to transition through there and transition up into head voice. And so uh, if I said, ah, 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 now if I leave that vowel open really wide until right where I hit the bridge, it can be challenging. Ah, it's it's harder, so it's almost easier to start to bridge a little bit sooner. Now I'm all the way through it. I'm all the way through the middle, and now I'm in head. So if we do it correctly, you really can't hear anything different because you just go right through it. So it doesn't necessarily sound different if we're mixing, and that's where. This middle area in is where we start to blend chest and head together. That's where we're mixing. And when we get through the other side, for the guys particularly in the G, then it's pretty much just head voice. And for the ladies, you've got a little bit, you got a little bit of chest, just a little bit left as you go up the uh, D, E flat, E. Another bridge starts on your on the E above middle above high C. So for the ladies, it's A, B flat, B, and C. C sharp, you're all the way through. Now there's D, E flat, approach to the next bridge. Now here's bridge number two for you. And in some cases, this is called middle for ladies because head voice doesn't start until the G above high C. That's just G5. So the ladies have a little bit larger middle than uh, us guys. <laughs> in terms of not actually being completely in head voice yet. This is all debatable too. People have different opinions about it, but hope that helps, Ian. How do you sing, uh, uh, Ink says, how do you sing with the neutral lyrics all the time? I do goos and geese even with the songs all the time, but my lyrics still comes, becomes high when I sing. 
I know this is because my uh, my voice sounds thin. Practice and um, work and patience. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I had to take lessons too. It helped a lot. Um, I think it's really challenging to do it all by yourself online. I, I had, haven't done that myself. I know you can make a lot of progress, a lot of progress online, but occasionally a lesson, I, you know, for me personally, I guess I'm just a little bit slow. Uh, George says, uh, Frank D. Ambrosio does Phantom of the Opera the best. Oh, I'll have to listen to that, Frank. Or uh, I'll have to listen to Frank, George, and just hear what it's like. Um, who, according to you, is the greatest vocalist of the generation that we should follow? Well, <clears throat> Dora Cake, I'm guessing you're a, a lady. And I don't know whether you want to follow ladies or men, but um, if you went to powertosing.com into the Knowledge Center and then hit Mix, clicked on the Mix page, there's a video there of Mix mashup of really good singers from different genres. Um, and, uh, and you can watch them and listen to them you know, like if you like rock, uh, Amy Lee from Evanescence. Uh, if you like musical theater, uh, Bernadette Peters, Leah Salonga, she's awesome. Barbara Streisand. Um, if you like a cross classical, crossover opera, pop, and so forth, I think a really wonderful singer is Haley Weston. Weston Ra. Weston Ra. Haley Westenra, uh, great opera uh, singer that I think is um, excellent, is Renee Fleming. A lot of people, well, some people don't like Anna N N N Trebko. I think she's Russian or from the from uh, that area. Opera, I think she's really good. If you like, um, I don't know, Beyonce is a uh, good singer. Uh, Mariah Carey, her first four albums particularly. Uh, I love Ava Cassidy. Ava Cassidy, listen to her. So, um, anyway, there's a bunch. Yeah, Stevie Wonder. Josh Groban. Michael Jackson. Michael Ball, John Rayett. So, there's some good ones. Really great singers. Um, Biddy says, uh, when I try to sing songs with the same sound as the exercises, when I, tr when I try to sing songs with the same sounds, as the ex same sound as the exercises, it sounds weaker and I lose breath a little quicker. When I try to sing songs with the same sound as the exercise, it sounds weaker and I lose breath a little bit quicker. Yeah, so why is it always harder? It's because the vowels change and the consonants change a lot more than they do in the exercises. And so we have to learn to, oftentimes, we have to learn to adjust the vowels because the vowel change can cause the larynx to come up and the vowel, if it spreads or, or widens, then it's going to cr maybe even crack or get, uh, get feel like it's going to do something bad. So we lighten it up. So we change the feel of it. And so we've got to learn to uh, bridge. Um, and so if you're a member of uh, Singer's Impact, uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if the bridge kit's in there. I think the bridge kit is in there. And the bridge kit's where you want to spend a lot of time. Um, but there's, it's possible to make a lot of progress. We don't always have to be singing uh, over, our, you know, way up into our head all the time in the extremities of our voice. So take it easy. You know, take a song that's primarily got you down, but you get a couple licks up high, you know, and so that you, you start to, you know, venture into the head voice. 
Um, and uh, eventually you can do it uh, sustained with vibrato in a melody. That's, that's, the object, that's the ultimate goal. Ian says the first bridge at E flat. Then, let me see. Then higher around B flat. I feel like I can bridge into something thinner and clearer. I can avoid the second. I can avoid the second bridge and sort of pull what I've got uh, after the first bridge. Do I make sense? Thank you. Um, you know, this is very common where our first bridge is the hardest. So for us guys, the E F F sharp is is you know very very difficult. And once we get through it. Then the A flat, the A, even the G sometimes is a lot, feels a lot easier. Um, where, and then we get up to the B flat B and it's like, wow, this is so easy. Why is it so easy up here? The further you get away from the first bridge, the easier it gets. Why? Um, it's because you're so far away from chest, there's no temptation to pull it. The closer you get to that chest voice in the first bridge, the more temptation there is to engage, engage chest and end up pulling. And that just makes the whole thing harder. Uh, Raja says, I'm not yelling. This is the thing. I just feel my full chest voice going into head resonance. That's all. This is the first time I felt what is breath support because my voice is so connected to my air. Awesome. GG. I uh, love your live chats. Thank you, Gigi. No, no worries, Riser. Uh, I, I think thank you for your comments. Um, and I don't, I didn't notice your English at all. At all. I think it's great. Uh, snowing in Fernie. Hey, uh, Roseanne, we've got a little bit of a remnant of of uh, hurricane. I don't know who it was, Francesca or something like that, uh, coming up from Baja. And we're getting moisture this afternoon. Our first rain, Roseanne, in uh, here in our in our area, in over a month, we haven't had a drop. Period. Nothing. So this is very welcome for us. Snowing, huh? Wow. Ink says, uh, "Hey Chuck, can you sing with the light head voice and demonstrate what it sounds like?" <laughs> Strangeland, I'm not really new, but I haven't been around for a bit. Oh, great. Well, nice to have you back. I have a lesson, I have a lesson with you this Thursday. Oh, cool. I was actually going to ask this question. <laughs> okay, cool. Rosanna um, uh, says, I feel I am more confident singing at church in the mic up to the D5. I just need to remember to lighten at the B4. If I don't, I am belting and it goes flat. Uh, Roseanne brings a really good point up, and that is that if we oversing right up to the bridge um, or even into the bridge, it can it can also cause your voice to sound very different. And so we at first, especially, we have to kind of bring back the volume so that we can so that it sounds like the same voice. Then bring the entire voice up as it develops rather than keep having that big strong chest and then you know and then have to ha duplicate the same thing in head that's asking an awful lot so a great approach is to bring the volume down in your chest voice um, hey Punit how you doing nice to have you here so we made it <laughs> good Uh, pharyngeal resonance, how to feel it? Is it good for singing? Uh, so, Dora, Dora Cake, um, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to by pharyngeal re resonance, but a pharyngeal voice can sound like this uh, little witchy, bratty sound. Nay, 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 nay. It's primarily used to connect the tone through the middle, through that bridge. Once the tone's connected, we don't really have to use that. However, in some character voices uh, in musical theater, it's a handy 
mechanism. Um, and in, actually in some rock genres, when you're singing up high, it, it can also be of use. So if I said, nay, 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 so it can, it can get pretty bitey, pretty cutting. And so it's very helpful and useful in certain circumstances to get a little more cut, a little more bite into the voice uh, without pulling. Because you can tell I'm not pulling chest. Nay, 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 nay. And I'm not in falsetto. Nay, 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 nay. So it's a form of mix. But it's a high larynx mix. And uh, it's a bit of a crutch because I can do it without that. Nay, 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 nay. Also, so... You know, um, but it's useful, particularly develop the voice. Uh, but eventually, I think it's ideal if we can um, just drop it after we've accomplished what we need to do, connect the tone and so forth. Puna says, that's what happens with me. I go from new to no. I think it squeezed my throat in that break, and I, and in a break, and I can't go higher. So Puna, no, 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 no. No, no. If I said no, 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 then I'm uh, the chest is coming up. So I want to keep the second one in the same place the first one was. No, 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 no. So it's got to be in the same groove, same pipe, whatever you want to say it. If I said no, no, no. If I said no, 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 same thing. No, 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 no. I've got to keep the second one in the same place the first one was. Um, all right, so uh, there's conversation going on here. Let me see if I can uh, grab a couple others. I'm running out of time, you guys. I've got a student coming in eight minutes. Um, Oh, thanks, George. Doing a great job on the website. I, I thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm, we're hopefully going to finish finish it up this week. We've got a, a couple fights going on with uh, the software on the homepage versus the the lounge singers lounge, and also um, a couple other things. So thank you. Um, but he says. Uh, I think I've had a little glimmers of the right way, but it's not consistent. Yeah. Consistency will build in, Mike. It'll come. Um, hi, Tyson. So maybe I should try to add a little volume to the exercises. Uh, either that or subtract the volume to the exercises. Or maybe get less loud down below so that the upper feels about the same as the lower. Uh, what you want to try and do is make them feel consistent in volume, not louder below or louder above, same volume, no matter what you're doing. And then as you get more coordinated, then you can take it up a notch. And that coordinates, you could take it up a notch, but bring them up together rather than one being louder and the other being softer. Bring it down so they're both soft. Tyson says, uh, again here from Zambia. Hey, nice to have you here again. Enjoyed your lessons, Chuck. I wish, I just wish it was possible to have one-on-one -on -one lessons with you. You're the reason I'm going to leave Africa for your great teachings. <laughs> yeah. I do do Skype, Tyson, and uh, I think you can go to the description below. And down below, I think there's a thing there that says Skype lessons. If not, you can find that on my website under Work With Me. Uh, Dora Cake says, I'm a guy. All right, Dora Cake. Celine Dion. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think she pulls a little bit sometimes, uh, Roseanne, but I think she's a good singer. Uh, Chuck, did Michael sing with a high larynx because his voice sounded light and thin? Uh, no, not necessarily. But he from, uh, from the high, there were times his larynx was up, but he was using it uh, like the pharyngeal sound that we did. But not ex not high enough larynx that he was um, uh, compromising his voice, which is what we do when we're starting to learn. All right, so I'm just about done here. Um, but I'm from the hair metal '80s. Got to sing high. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. A oh, man, I'm late. Hi. 
Dana, nice to have you here, and this will be recorded, and you can come back and watch. But we've missed you. What is the note where the altos start? The altos, uh, if the al if they're true contralto, George, they start with the where the tenors and basses do. Contralto voice that's very low. If a lady can sing down to D or uh, C below middle C, they're a contralto, and they bridge right where the tenors do. The E F F sharp. I uh, tenor one, I can drift right into alto. Yeah, so that's not, uh, is not unusual. There's a lot of crossover in choirs between the altos and tenors where they're singing each other's uh, lines. To strengthen the mask resonance. Tyson, I don't know what you mean by mask. Um, I don't know the answer to that. What exercise to strengthen the mask resonance? Don't know. I, I never used the term, and I'm not really uh, familiar with where exactly that is. Bite is what I need. Yep. Adrian, hey man, you got students coming up on 11 p.m., so sorry, name, uh, time zones guy did some time dust. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, uh, Akshay, we're, <laughs> we're done. I gotta run. Um, Darkness says, I'm a Filipino actor in LA, recently did a musical play, what do I need what do I need to vocalize after the first show going to the second? Um, so are you like doing back-to-back -back shows? Um, is that what you're referring to? I'm not, oh, it was, it was, it was taken out. Uh, why do some tenors and baritones bridge on the same note when a tenor is higher than a baritone? I know, that's where the bridges are, Inc. They're always in the same place. Um, the bass, the basso cantata, the basso profundo, uh, they, they bridge down lower, but the tenors and the uh, baritones and many, and many basses bridge in the same location. Same thing with the women. Got to go, you guys. I got a student coming. Uh, I got to get going. Uh, thanks for a really lively discussion today. I hope this has been helpful. And um, uh, remember, you can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. This is Chuck Gilmore signing out now. Thanks.